Hey guys, Phil Nolan here. As you may know, 3D animation with the 2D painted look is as big as ever. Whether it's with feature films like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, or weekly TV shows like Futurama and Family Guy. So in this video we'll be taking a look at how easy cell shading can be in Lightwave 2018, as well as some ways you can do it in earlier versions of Lightwave. We'll also take a look at making ink lines with a natural, hand-drawn look. This video assumes you know the basics of using Lightwave, such as creating your model and setting up the scene with animation. So buckle up and let's get surfacing. Oh, and before we get started, why not go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell icon so you can get notified every time I upload a new video like this. So here we are in Lightwave, and let's just start off with something simple, this nice little coffee cup, which I made for a different project. So if we want to make this cell shaded, you can see right now it's a regular render. We'll come up to the surface editor, and it is using principled BSDF. And we can come up here to shading model, and change the shading model to cell. And pretty much there you go. It's pretty easy in Lightwave 2018. And so we have this diffuse section here. We'll hit plus. And then we can drag these around if you want to change the you know, area that is that color. So if I want less of the really dark, I can move it down. If I want less of the bright spot, I can move that up. That doesn't really look that great though, so let's move them back down here. Yeah, something like that. And then there's one thing that we're missing is, in the original there was a big sheen here. So we can come up and turn on glossy reflections. And there we go. And we also get a nice little reflection around the edge here. And that's pretty much it for uh, basic cell shading. So let's move on to something a little more complicated, a character. Okay, so here we are with our character. And this is pretty much the same thing. I've just got her blank. And this is a character that I made with Adobe Fuse. And then we did a little animation with her in uh, Adobe Mixamo. And so here we have our different surfaces. And for some reason, Adobe Fuse saves out different parts of her as different objects, like the, the body and the shirt and the shoes and pants are all, and the hair are all different uh, objects. But that comes in handy later, actually. But so we've got the different surfaces for each one. So let's look at the body first. And we'll. Like we did with the coffee cup, we'll set the shading model to cell. And there we go, we can see the cell shading on it. And let's adjust this a little bit. And give her a little bit more shadow on there. Just so we can see it a little bit better. And then we'll come back to material tab. And I'm going to make it kind of a slight tan color, sort of skin tone-ish. Something like that, maybe a little bit pinker. Looks good. Now that might be a little bit too gray, too desaturated. Let's bring it up a little bit more. That looks interesting. Okay, and then we can continue doing the same with uh, other things like the hair. Oops, we'll go to shading model, cell, and then we'll change the color to, I don't know, so say like a, a purplish, light purple. All right, okay. Uh, let's go for her top. 
use that to sell and we will adjust this a little bit, tweak it so we can maybe you can see some of those wrinkles a little bit more yeah I think that looks good let's bring this one up a little bit more Okay, and then we'll come back here to material, change this to maybe a, a light blue color. And so you can basically see how it works. And something that's really cool about this is I obviously have VPR on now, but if you go back to regular texture, shade, texture shaded solid, you can still see the cell shading in there. So that's really useful. So I switch to perspective view, and you can rotate around her and really see that shell, cell, that <laughs> cell shading. And so let's go back to our camera view. And you now, as I scroll through here, you can see the animation, and that really helps to look at it in different angles and see how. You know, the cell shading is looking if you want to make it look like, you know, say I'm looking at it here and I say, oh, I don't like how that shadow looks, so I can go in and change it. So there we go. That's our basics of cell shading with no textures on her. Before we go any further, let's talk about something I should have mentioned earlier, is the lighting. So here's our, our light here. I have just one light in the scene. And so the type of light you use, they kind I think they all work, but they may not all work as you expect. So you have to play with them, you know, see if they work for you the way you like. But... I personally just think it's fine to stick with a distant light. That's what I've been using. And it works out fine. And then of course you can adjust the brightness. So that that would help you with your uh, shading. And of course, let's hide these. Here's our light. You can rotate the light as well. So that should all work as expected. So suppose you have textures on your character that you want to use uh, with the cell shading. That should work just fine. Uh, say, suppose on her shirt or on her eyes or down here on her shoes. I know that we have textures for this that uh, these shoes are pretty much blank <laughs> without the texture. So looks like look at her top here and I'll click T and I'll set the planar to UV and the UV map to tops and then I will load an image and here's my image with all the textures here and there it is it works just fine and then all the others I already have these loaded so I'll just turn them on Here's for her hair is actually not the purple that I had picked. It is pink. And we got the shoes that I was just talking about. Turn those on. See, now that's a much better texture for those shoes. And for her body, there actually is a texture. It's not just flat. And we actually have an eyelash texture. Put that on there and also there is transparency for her eyelashes and the same goes oh, well here's her eyes uh, the same went for her hair there is a transparency texture on that as well and this is her eyes I'll turn that on and now we can see her eyes appear and there we go we've got her Nice textures done. We'll turn on VPR. 
And there she is. She's ready for animation. So now that we're done with the actual cell shading itself, let's add some ink lines around the edges of the model. So we don't need the surface editor anymore. We can actually close that because all of the edges rendering is handled in the object properties. So let's look at the body properties. Here we go. And we have the edges tab here along the primitives tab. And here we have all different types of edges we can choose. And so let's first go with silhouette edges. That's the main one you're going to be using. So we'll turn that on. And you can see they come on here. They're very thin. Let's crank that up to three pixels. And that's better. And we can also do sharp creases. Uh, that'll be useful when, uh, say, her knees bend and it makes a crease along there. And we'll crank that one also up to three. And there's one problem that comes up with these is that they will always be three pixels. Which means if you zoom the camera really far away, they will look really thick. So let's look at perspective view and I can show you how that looks. You can see right now they already look a little bit thick. But if we zoom way out, you can see they're already looking a little bit too thick and it's just not right. And the same thing if you zoom in further. Let's move closer. You can see now they're very thin and it's not quite right. So let's zoom that back out some. And let's go back to our camera view. And the way we can fix that is down here with shrink edges with distance. And then you can set the nominal distance, which right now I have set to kind of the distance uh, between the character and the camera. That's about seven feet. And so, yeah, that's the way that works. And it's kind of handy this way because now you can fine tune uh, that distance by just adjusting this. So if I bring it down further, you can see the lines get thinner. If I bring it up more, you get quite a bit thicker. Up more. Yeah, that's thinner. Uh, but yeah, you can just adjust it. And yeah, that's really thin down there. And then if I brought it way up, they do get thicker. But so we'll just bring it back down to around seven, something like that. And that looks pretty good. And of course, you can also just adjust the th uh, thickness of the pixels here. So let's move up to her hair because that's a different spot where we have to worry about something else here. Let's turn on silhouette edges. Bring that up to three. And in this one, we're going to be, oh, we'll have sharp creases on. Bring that up to three. And in that one, we will also have intersecting edges because the different blades of hair will cut into each other. So I've already got that set to three. And we're going to mainly be looking at unshared edges because these are just flat uh, polygons. I'll put that up at three. And that's really where we get a lot of our lines in there. Let's move this so we can see her hair a little bit more like this. And you can see that it's there, but it's a little bit too thick. So I can set the shrink edges and then I can bring it down a little bit. So that's a little bit thinner. And that's where it comes in handy to have the hair, at least the hair, as a separate object. Uh, but having all of these as separate objects is really handy because you can uh, make those adjustments on a per object basis. So that's that. That's pretty good. 
Uh, we can come back and uh, her eyelashes are already black so you don't really need to do that. Uh, same with her uh, eyes that are listed as default here. You're not really going to see anything there. Let's look at her shoes. Turn those on. Set that to three. Sharp creases, three. And that looks much better. And her bottoms is her shorts. Turn those on. Oops, three. And then her tops, her, t her shirt. And there we go. Again, we can always turn on shrink edges with distance for all of these. And I've already got my nominal distance set. That one's already on. Yep, just make sure we've got them all on. That's good. Okay, so that's the basics of putting some ink lines on her. Uh, next up, let's look at how to make these look a little bit more like hand-drawn. So they're, they've got a little bit of variation in the thickness and the thinness. Okay, to add some variation to that, I'm already on my body object. And we're going to have to turn on this checkbox for edit nodes and we'll open the node editor and I've already got the turbulence node loaded here we can get that from the 3d textures on the side and it'll be right there and so we'll open the settings for that and I've already got this set the way I've you now tested it for the sake of this tutorial uh, but overall you want to set the uh, for a normal human sized character you want to set everything pretty low, like I've got the scale here set to 5 inches, the small scale at 0.614, uh, messed with the contrast, so it's, it's fairly low, but you can adjust that too if you want. And once you know, you've got that set, and you want to drag these alphas over to the other side here, we have uh, Silhouette Ages Taper. For example, and you have one of these uh, node points here for every option in here. So the silhouette edges taper. We can already see I dragged it on there, and you can see it's getting a little bit thinner and thicker in certain areas. And it kind of overall made the whole thing a little bit too thin. So I'm going to bring this up to say five. And that's a little better. See, so now we can see that it's a little bit thicker down on the bottom part of her calf. And then on this part's a little thinner. And we just get a whole lot of variation in there. So it looks a little more natural. And down here on the sharp creases, I can do the same thing. Bring that up to, say, five or six. And then we'll also have to drag this over to sharp creases taper. And so once you've got these set and you're happy with them and you know once you make those connections you can bring this up and play with the different settings to get it the way you like it. Uh, you're all happy with it. Now you can come over here to this little clipboard icon and you can copy the nodes from that and then bring it over to another object, say her shirt and then make sure the edit nodes is turned on and just hit that button and paste nodes and now if you look in there you'll see it'll be exactly the way it was on the other one oh, and then you will probably still need to bring these up and so now we can see a little bit it's a little harder to see on this one but it's a little bit thinner here and thicker in different areas and let's do the same thing with her bottoms I'll bring these up to about five five 
turn on edit nodes and paste and then again you can adjust these as necessary on a per object basis so let's do her hair now this will be a little more complicated I've already got it set up here and I've adjusted the turbulence a little bit differently here I gave it some more contrast and we've got a bunch of these set up here so we're gonna have to bring the alpha over to silhouette edges taper and unshared edges taper and I can see sharp creases taper and then intersection edges taper is all the way down here and see that's really helping her hair a lot let's raise these up to five Yeah, and it just really gives it a much more natural look up there. And so that's it. I have to do her shoes too. I'll paste the ones that I had from before. And bring these up to five. And make sure I got everything here. Body, shoes, hair, bottoms, and tops. Yep. So that's it for our ink lines. Uh, next up, uh, we're just about done. So next up, we'll take a look at how to do some self shading in Lightwave 2015. Okay, here we are in Lightwave 2015.3. Uh, I brought my mug back. And we don't have the cell rendering option. So we have a few other choices we can go with. And they're all here in the Surface Editor. First of all, we can come over to the Shaders tab. And we have a few shaders in here that come built into Lightwave. Uh, the first one being right at the top here. It's BESM. Stands for Big Eyes, Small Mouth. A little reference to 90s anime when the plugin was written and you can double click on that and there we go we get different options uh, let's close that for a moment and we'll switch over to VPR and there we go we can see our options here and the downside to this one is that you have to set everything and then hit OK every time you want to see it change it does not change in real time but we can click our colors here and you know, pick a a nice light shade for a green pick maybe a slightly darker shade or blue we'll go darker than that and then we can just leave the last one at black and let's turn on our light and our ambient and we'll click OK and there we go so that is one option uh, has a few other options in here uh, you can play with so that is one option you can go with so let's close that one remove and let's go for the next one down here is super cell shader and this one is a little more complicated it actually has much less options but it also is all just numbers so down here we have our brightness set to 100%. That is the brightest spot down here. It's our little sheen. And you can adjust our minimum and uh, or this one is just the minimum. So slide that down and this one actually does work in the VPR. And we can adjust the brightness. Bring it down so now it's black up there. Uh, so zone 3 will be the next one, it's this one here. We can adjust our maximum and minimum and you can see it gets softer but when we bring the minimum up you know it'll get, well this will get sharper and then we can bring this minimum down and that'll get sharper 
So it's a little bit confusing. Uh, you just have to play with it and get adjust the minimums and maximums. But it does work with the color that you had set in here. So this is a good thing. And this one, unlike the other one, does also work if you have an image on there. So that is good. Let's turn that off for now. And we'll close this. And we'll just remove this one. Uh, the next shader is a third-party shader. And you can get it from the uh, lightwave3d.com website, uh, the community tab, and the plugins. And just search in here for Unreal, and you'll find Unreal Extreme 2. And when you click the link there, it'll take you to this Japanese web page. It is a Japanese app, but it comes in English. And you come down here to the layout section, you'll see Unreal Extreme 2 version 1.51. Uh, the latest version is for Lightwave 11.x. Uh, it will still work in 2015. Uh, so you just download that one and install it. And then on uh, the shaders tab here, we have a bunch of different plugins for it. We'll just look at Cell Painter for now. And you can double click it. And this gives you a nice interface. This is actually the one that a lot of the anime makers in Japan use, or at least were using up until recently. And we can just slide these around to get our uh, you know, softness or sharpness. And there we go. There we go, nice and sharp. And you can click in there to add another one. And can change our brightness for that one. Uh, this one will also work with an image. Okay, and we have a color picker. <laughs> Adjust your colors in here, it's a little complicated. But yeah, so that's, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with this. Uh, there's English instructions available that come with it. Okay, so let's close that one and remove it. And the next option we have is actually in the texture editor. We can add layer and add a gradient. And so here we have our gradient here. We can add one on the bottom. And I'm going to set the input parameter to light incidence. And then for light, I'll choose our only light we have in the scene. And then we can pick one of these. And see, I'll right click anywhere in here. And then lower the V. Adjust that and set the smoothing to step. Now we get a nice harsh edge on there. You can adjust this and let's actually make that one the bright one. Just drag that V up, or of course, you can click the thumbnail and use the color selector here. And we'll make this one the blackest one. Then we can click in there and do the same thing. Set the smoothing to step and make this a little brighter and we can pick something in there. And the thing is you can see some shading in there. Uh, it looks like a bit of a shadow or something in here. So let's click use texture for that and then we'll set our luminosity to 100% and are diffused to 0%. And now we just get the solid colors. So as for the edges, it works mostly the same way, except we don't have that copy and paste button. So let's 
click our silhouette edges here and I've already got shrink edges turned on and we get a nice solid line uh, in 2015 we do have nodes for this and I've already grabbed our turbulence here and see we can find that in 3d textures and turbulence and I've set it up uh, a little bit differently just for this particular scene but pretty much the same as we were doing before we'll drag the alpha into silhouette edges and then we get some nice uh, effects on there that make it look a little more hand-drawn okay so there we go there is our cell shading we looked at how to do it in light with 2018 as well as setting up the edges and making them look a little more hand-drawn and then we looked at doing it in 2015 and doing the same so I hope you liked this video if you learned something Please subscribe, feel free to donate on Patreon, uh, click that bell icon so that you get notified of more videos that I post like this, and be sure to share this with your friends, and then I'll see you next time.